How many times have you wished you could have a redo in life? Well, stay tuned and I'll explain why this isn't healthy and why you should be looking forward and not backward. Coming at you right now on Charles Hurst Reinvention. How many times have you heard the phrase, if only I could do it all over again? Regret, one of the most common emotions in human beings and also the least productive. Unless, of course, you're using regret to learn from your mistakes in an effort to advance forward. But most people aren't doing that. They're sitting there simply dwelling in it. When a person says, I wish I could do it all over again, usually they're somewhere between their late 30s and mid 50s. And what they're wishing for a redo is their life. They wish they could start all over at 18 years old or even beginning of high school. Hit that reset button. They mentally negotiate that if they could just have another chance, things would be different this time. And hence lies Thoreau's famous quote, most men live their lives in quiet desperation. Except he's slightly incorrect. Most men don't live this quietly, they live it roaringly. They imagine themselves in different careers, with a different spouse. Maybe not being part of the homeowners association in the suburbs. Ah, they are now 50, they see where they went wrong. If only they'd be allowed to go back and make amends. For this time, they are sure that they could achieve that perfect equilibrium of happiness and contentment. Yet, of course, this is impossible, but yet people will try anyway. A middle-aged man gets a new Corvette, dyes his hair, and takes up cliff diving. Or maybe they break up their marriage, convinced that that new addition 20 years younger must have been the soulmate they missed on the first run, hanging out with new clothes in the hipster bars at 50 years old. But even with these midlife acts of defiance, the slow realization comes. You can't go back and relive your youth. And using just for men hair coloring won't help you fake it. And this is when people usually go into the state of despair, knowing that they can't go back, but if they could, they would have had better lives. And the fact is, that's just not true. Let's take the career first. Is there anybody out there who wishes they picked a different one? And fortunately on this aspect, you still can. But many people regret the career that they're in currently. Now fortunately for me, although it took a little while, I hit the bullseye with the career I picked in physical therapy. Actually, it's the only thing I could see me doing for a living. And even with that, there's been times where I've had to take massive amounts of time off. Even though this career was the ideal place for me in the world, there have been times when I've hit complete and total burnout. And luckily, I survived in it long enough where I only have to work about 30% of the time now. And really, I probably don't even have to do that. But during my years as a physical therapist, I had many, many patients with a variety of careers. Not just the elderly, but those currently working. And the one thing they all had in common was, if they hit the lottery tomorrow, they would quit their job the day after. Very few people would actually work for free. It doesn't really matter how passionate you start off in your field. Eventually, as the years go on, you're going to get worn down and get tired of it. For instance, before I was a physical therapist, I had aspirations to be a police officer. And actually, if I didn't get into PT school, I was headed to the LAPD Academy to accomplish just that task. Then I figured I'd get a degree in criminal justice or even a master's and work my way up to detective or possibly even with the federal agencies. There have been times in the course of my career where I wonder if I shouldn't have gone that route, especially when I have a cop type in front of me as a patient. But you know what's funny? I've had federal agents, local police officers, and special detectives on my treatment table. It was really funny. When they talk about their careers, they tell me about their day-to-day, -day, the relentless bureaucracy and asinine politics they have to deal with. Many of them were equally jealous of me because the grass always looks greener when you've never actually planted your foot on the pasture. Everything novel looks fun until you've toiled at it for about 10 years. And how about that spouse that you've lasted with for 20 years that you now think is a mistake? Did you ever consider the fact that maybe you're just in the monotony of marriage that everybody experiences? Everybody gets tired of each other. I once knew a guy who torpedoed his marriage because he was convinced that he found his soulmate that he had missed on the first role. So he divorced and remarried that younger model. Two years later, that marriage ended. You know why? 
because it wasn't his soulmate, it was just new. And this is why you don't let the thought of, if I could do it all over again, even enter your head, because your do-over would result in that same discontent in the end. You might have a different life, yes, and it would be filled with equally different mistakes. Unfortunately, when we are young, we are equally matched with inexperience. Sure, the journey through the waters may be a little less choppy if you could go back to 18 with a 50-year-old mindset. The only way to gain experience is to come from a place of inexperience. And sitting around at 50 dwelling on that inexperience is a waste of your time. Instead of thinking about if I could do it all over, a much better mental worldview would be to adjust your rudder on your current journey. Are you 45 years old and regretting your career? Well, instead of wasting your hours wishing you could build a time machine, embark on a new path of career. There isn't a rule that says you can't change it. Or if you're in your current career and getting burned out, maybe there's a lateral move you can make. Maybe there's a new certification that will keep you interested while advancing you forward on your resume. Are you mourning your youth because you can't date the 20 year old anymore? Well, I can tell you from hanging around the gyms my whole life, there's a lot of 40 some year olds who are actually more fit than their younger peers. Are you 40 some years old and pathetically and grossly out of shape and have been most of your adult life? Well, instead of living in a state of regret, dwelling on the past, maybe you should determine that for the next 40 years, you're gonna be in the best shape of your life. Do you see my point here? The key to not regretting the past is to not let the past enter your mind to begin with. Your focus on life should be the present, the near future, and even the far future. You shouldn't be crying over decisions made in your lost years. You should be concentrating on making the future years the best they can possibly be. If you are in a continuous state of progression of self, you won't be looking behind you. You'll only be advancing on that continual trail toward the greatness that awaits you. I'm Charles Hurst, author of The Shepherd and the Running Wolf, A Path to Forgiveness on the Pacific Crest Trail. That and other works are found on Amazon.com. See the link in the description below. I don't ask for donations. If you buy one of my books for a couple bucks, then you'll get something of great value in return. For that is the capitalistic way. If you're ready to join our tribe to the path to excellence, hit that subscribe, tap the like, and smash the bell, and I will see you at the next sunrise.